breathing, the necessary life-sustaining action that we all take for granted every day. Thanks to our handy-dandy brains, we don't have to put much thought in the breathing. But maybe we should start putting some more thought into what we inhale. Growing up, we've all heard how bad smoking is for us. But nowadays, smoking has taken the form of something that has been deceiving the educated world of tobacco and cigarette use, the e-cigarette. With this new form of cigarette, vaping has skyrocketed among the younger generation. According to the Center for Disease Control's website, as updated on October 23, 2018, every day more than 3,800 youth younger than 18 years old smoke their first cigarette. As a sister and a friend, I have seen my loved ones partake in the toxic habit of vaping. Living with a brother who has a strong addiction to vaping, I have seen the negative effects of e-cigarette use, both health-wise and behavior-wise. The popular use of vaping e-cigarettes should be banned for the health of the future generation. I will illustrate this by first explaining why e-cigarettes are just as dangerous for your health as regular cigarettes. Second, I will discuss why the use of e-cigarettes became popular among adult smokers. And finally, I will explain the FDA's Youth Tobacco Prevention Plan that will help save the youth for, against vaping. Now, let's discuss what's hidden inside those deceptively fun flavored e cigarette vapor liquids. E cigarettes are filled with tons of hidden chemicals, just like cigarettes, which affect your health and lungs just the same. E cigarettes come in many shapes and sizes. Some even resemble the common cigarettes that we're used to, but unlike regular cigarettes, they contain a place to hold liquid. These liquids are filled with tons of hidden chemicals that are eventually heated up and inhaled by the user. This vapor that is created from heating up the liquids is called aerosol. And if you're thinking that sounds unhealthy, well, that's because it is. This, these, these cigarettes also, these, these flavorings that are contained inside the liquids contain a chemical called diacetyl which, according to the Center for Disease Control's website, last updated on October 23, 2018, is a chemical that is associated with a rare lung disease that causes permanent damage to the bronchial holes, the tiniest airways in the lungs. And sadly, even the vapor liquids that claim to be nicotine-free still contain trace amounts of nicotine. These aerosols not only have tons of chemicals that are related to rare chronic lung diseases, but they still contain nicotine, the same addictive drug in cigarettes, which, affect, which have all the same hidden side effects and risks as regular cigarettes do. Now, let's take a breather from all those toxic chemicals and discuss why e-cigarettes first became popularly used by adults and adolescents. E-cigarettes first arrived on the market because they were offered as a safer way to smoke and an easy way to quit smoking. E-cigarettes e -cigarettes first arrived in the U.S. in 2007. And since then, they have been investigated by addiction researchers as possible tools to help adult smokers quit smoking. In a recent study done by Preventing Chronic Disease article published on April 2017 by Ralph Cabello, a, doc a doctor at the, center, at the National Center for Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion. In this study, groups of adult smokers were given the option to quit via FDA-approved drugs or non-FDA-approved e-cigarettes. In this study, it was found that the group that quit via medica FDA medications had much more success than those who quit via e-cigarettes. This was because instead of com completely quitting smoking, they simply switched the way they smoked, not how much they smoked. Through this study, it has been proven that e-cigarettes have not been helpful in helping adult smokers quit smoking, but instead a new problem has arisen. From adults using them to adolescents using them. E-cigarette use has been soaring in the younger generation. This is a particular concern because the exposure of a developing brain to, e to nicotine may impair brain development and predispose teenagers to addictions to other drugs. According to a 2014 survey done by the Food and Drug Administration, 81% of youth e-cigarette users have cited the availability of appealing flavors as a primary use for using. And another cited reason was that it was safer than smoking. Just because vaping might be safer than smoking, that doesn't make it safe. Now that we know how e-cigarettes have become popular among adults and adolescents, let's discuss how we can help save the youth against vaping. By supporting the FDA's Youth Tobacco Prevention Plan, we can help save the younger generation against vaping. The FDA recently put forth an aggressive enforcement strategy targeting the illegal sales 
of tobacco products and kid-friendly kid -friendly marketing. On September 12, 2007, two, on September 12, 2018, FDA's commissioner, Dr. Scott Godlib, gave a speech regarding a youth tobacco prevention, prevention plan. He said, we cannot allow a whole new generation to become addicted to nicotine. In the coming weeks, we'll take additional action under our youth tobacco prevention plan to immediately address the youth access to and the appeal of tobacco products. There are three main steps to this plan. First, preventing youth access to tobacco products. Second, curbing kid-friendly marketing of tobacco products. And finally, educating teenagers on the risk of using any tobacco products, including e-cigarettes. And uh, as well as educating retailers on their role in protecting the youth against tobacco products. This plan is not all on the FDA shoulders. We can help play a role in protecting the youth too. By, we can help play a role in protecting the youth too. The more aware we are of the dangers of vaping, the more we can share to our loved ones about the dangers of vaping. I believe that the first step to solving any problem is being informed, which luckily I've just done for you. Now that we know how we can protect our loved ones and the younger generation against vaping, let's review all that we've learned. The popular use of vaping e-cigarettes should be banned for the health of the future generation. I, I discuss this by first explaining why e-cigarettes are just as dangerous as regular cigarettes, second, how they became popularly used by adults and adolescents, and finally, how we can support the FDA's Youth Tobacco Prevention Plan. With all the dangers in the world that could possibly kill us, wouldn't it be nice to be able to control some of those dangers? Choosing to not vape can greatly save the lives of our friends, families, and future generations to come. And now that you know the true dangers of vaping, will you help protect our future or watch it vaporize away?